beautiful day to just be outside and enjoy the fact that we live in a world where nothing bad could ever happen. Oh my God, that shockwave's gonna be here in about 90 seconds. I've got a minute and a half to build an entire homestead, a structure, everything, start gardening, get livestock all in order in the next minute and a half. No problem at all. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. One of the things that I'm always saying here on my channel is that whatever the situation is in the world, whatever your personal situation is, it's never too late to begin prepping. You'll always make yourself better off in the future if you do some preparations ahead of time than if you do nothing. Though, with the situation that we're looking at in the world right now, there are certain types of things that you might be interested in doing if you were going to move into a more prepared lifestyle that it might be getting a little bit late for. And one of those things is starting your own homestead, going out into the woods, starting a retreat location, creating that uh, or turning that into a homestead. You know, to some degree, it's already kind of too late for that. But never daunted, we're going to talk about in this video a way that you could do something. I know one of the challenges for a lot of people, myself included, is finances. Uh, you know, having a home is one of the most expensive things, uh, one of the biggest investments that anyone is ever going to make in their life. But there are ways of doing it that can be incredibly expensive, and there are ways of doing it that can be much less expensive. And in this way, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about a way, a method of building your own homestead that. Uh, we're talking about thousands of dollars versus hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is something I've done many times for myself. I built, uh, built a couple of very large uh, homestead structures and I built a couple of uh, small mini houses. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video is a way to build a mini house that is expandable, that you can kind of make it any size that you like. Uh, and it's going to be that, that kind of price range that we're talking thousands of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is, you know, it's still a lot of money, but in terms of what it gives you, being able to have your own home for, you know, a matter of thousands of dollars, I think it's worth uh, anyone thinking about. And what we're gonna talk about in this video is how to do it from the ground up. Now, uh, because building your own house takes a lot of time, we're gonna uh, kind of condense that down in this video and we're gonna be building it instead of with two by fours and two by sixes and one by eights and all this kind of lumber that uh, you'd buy from a lumber yard, we're gonna be building it with popsicle sticks. Uh, it's still the same basic idea. We're gonna do the same basic layout uh, and uh, we're gonna do a miniature version of a house right here on this foundation out of uh, squishy foam, which is like kind of the, the worst foundation you could possibly imagine. Uh, it's certainly not like, you know, building your, head, your house on bedrock, but we're gonna use this as a foundation. I've uh, pre-cut a bunch of popsicle sticks to be dimensional lumber sizes, and I'm going to go through how to build a house, and you could literally run to the hardware store, buy lumber, and you could do this this weekend if you decided to. I'd recommend maybe uh, putting a little, little bit more thought <laughs> to it than that, uh, than running straight out. But I mean, it really is that simple that you just need to get the materials, get a couple of tools, and you can do it yourself. I've done it many times myself. Just to give you a little bit of background on myself, uh, I don't come from a construction background. I am a photographer, I'm a video guy. Uh, that's always been my job. I never had any skills. I'd never even built a birdhouse before I decided to build my own house for myself. I just figured, you can do it and it worked out and I'm sure the same is true for many of you guys. So let's see, what are we gonna be uh, starting with here? Like I mentioned, we are gonna be building with popsicle sticks and we've got a couple of popsicle sticks right here. I've colored these popsicle sticks green to uh, kind of simulate that these are pressure treated popsicle sticks. Uh, when you get lumber at a lumber yard, the, the pressure treated stuff is green. It's important to have pressure treated lumber if you're going to have the lumber in contact with a foundation because you can get condensation uh, as the foundation gets cool uh, and, uh, and then maybe some humid air gets near there. It, it can be kind of like a cool glass of lemonade outside on a hot day. You can get condensation on the foundation and that can get onto your boards. So any board that you have in contact with concrete or any kind of a structure like that, it's a good idea to have it be pressure treated. And it's also going to inhibit things like termites from uh, burrowing into it. I'm not a huge fan of the, the reality of pressure treated wood. It's it, impregnated with chemicals that are toxic to life and you know things that are toxic to life aren't necessarily my favorite things in the world but something I hate even more is the idea of building your house and then having it get destroyed from moisture and termites. So it's a good idea to have some pressure treated wood just in contact with your foundation. Uh, instead of using nails, uh, uh, or uh, in this case, uh, we'd be using bolts if we're attaching to a foundation. We're gonna be using a hot glue gun. I've got this right here. And 
when you put together a foundation, there's a couple different ways of doing that. You can do it yourself with cinder blocks. I've done that many times before. That's pretty labor intensive, but you can do it. You can hire someone to come in and pour a foundation for you. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. We're not going to get specifically into the pouring of a foundation uh, in this video because we're going to talk more about the carpentry here. But if you call someone that does foundation pours, you can get them to pour you a foundation. You tell them that you want to have the anchor bolts anchor bolts, that's a term you want to use, uh, sticking out, you know, every, you know, two or three feet uh, in, in your foundation. Uh, you know, it's a common thing. They'll know what to do. And you can get a foundation that is pretty small. We're going to be talking about building a structure that is maybe like eight feet wide, 10 feet wide, and you can uh, make it as long as you want. We're going to talk a little bit later in this video about how, how you can create this in a way that's sort of modular. So once you've got an idea for what to do, you can decide how big you want to make it. Before we get going, I just want to mention, you're probably hearing a little bit of cheeping going on in the background. We have chicks now. We're uh, experimenting with having uh, chicks here at our homestead. These guys are just over two weeks old and River is here comforting them, trying to keep them as quiet as possible. Oh, here's, is that chipmunk? Oh yeah, we call this one chipmunk because he has some stripe patterns. If you put him in front of this camera here, you get to have a, a good view of chipmunk here. And um, yeah, this is a new thing for us. We're experimenting with it. And one thing that I've uh, uh, learned early on is that they're quite loud and I'm sure you're gonna be hearing them. Okay, so we've got our pressure treated boards and we have our foundation here. Uh, now I mentioned that when you have a foundation created, either you're putting anchor bolts in yourself, or if you hire someone to pour a foundation for you, you can put anchor bolts. Now, when, you do, when you're putting in the foundation, you have a choice. It could just be, uh, you know, really short foundation. You could have it just go below the frost line and come up like, you know, eight or 10 inches above the uh, surface of the dirt area, or you could have it go in pretty deep. Now we're going to be talking about building a small house, but if you were to make it with a uh, foundation wall that goes, uh, you know, reasonably deep underground, you could have kind of a crawl space underneath where you can kind of, you know, maybe you can't stand up completely, but maybe you could make it, you know, five feet tall, four feet tall or something. So you could have a functional basement underneath the mini house that you're creating for not that much extra expense. It's really doesn't, it's not a huge difference between making a foundation wall that is say four feet tall and six feet tall. It's not that much extra concrete. It's not that big a deal. I'd highly recommend uh, thinking about that for the enormous amount of storage area that you could cr uh, create underneath your, your house, which would make a really great pantry because being down under the ground, uh, you know, it's going to stay a little cooler uh, down there. And as long as you keep it dry, it'd be a great place for storing things. So we're going to start attaching boards to our foundation. And this is the, uh, really the most exciting time. I think, you know, you're, you're finally beginning your project. And uh, what we're going to do is we would take these uh, pressure treated boards and we're going to lay them on top of the bolts uh, that are uh, sticking out there. Uh, they're not going to sit down uh, right on the foundation because we're going to have to drill some holes in them. Uh, but we're going to uh, just set the board down on the, the bolts there. And what we're going to do, and I'm going to be demoing a number of tools that uh, you're going to be using. We would be taking a hammer and what you would do is you take your hammer and you bang it on the board wherever there's a bolt sticking up. And the reason for that is you want to make a, a mark on the bottom side of the board so you know where you're going to be drilling your holes because you need to drill holes through your board so the bolts can come up through it. So you've tapped across uh, your whole board, you've marked where all of the, uh, the bolts are going to come through, then you take the board and you flip it over and you're going to take a drill. I didn't bring a drill in here but you're going to take a drill with a drill bit that is big enough so that the uh, uh, the bolts can pass through and you're going to drill holes in all the, the spots where you had had uh, your hammer tap little uh, bolt marks and then you're going to take the board, flip it back over and you're going to put it in place. Okay? And we're going to, uh, instead of uh, attaching it down with, well, the proper tool for attaching down the board would be a set of wrenches. Uh, you know, the uh, the, uh, the nut heads, uh, you know, they could be different sizes. So if you have a set of wrenches, you can make sure you can attack it. Um, and we're going to be using uh, just a hot glue gun to simulate that we are bolting this thing down. So we got one right there. All right. And we're going to do with the same with our side pieces. Okay. Same thing, tapping them, making marks under there and then drilling out the holes and then securing them down. All right. And as you're doing this, you're not going to necessarily want to really clamp things down until you get all your boards in place. 
One thing I should note is that when you pay someone to uh, pour a foundation, uh, there's many people who are going to do a very good job at pouring your foundation. They'll make it nice and square, perfectly right angles on there, but you can't take that for granted. So as you are doing this, you're going to be wanting to use a little bit of math and uh, do some measurements using uh, the uh, Pythagorean theorem. You can look that up. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what that is, is a way of making sure that you have a right angle. Because if you have a triangle that has a right angle in it, uh, if you take this distance, a, uh, a, and this distance, b, and you multiply them by themselves, a squared, it would, be, let's say this is 10 feet, 10 feet squared is 100, and let's say this is 10 feet, 10 feet squared is 100, and you add those up together, you get 200, and then if you take the square root of that number, uh, that should be the distance between these two corner points. And that's a way of telling whether or not this is actually a right angle here and whether you have a nice square foundation. Uh, if the number you have, uh, it's supposed to be 200, if it's a little bit more than 200, you know that this board here is a little bit splayed out. So you know, you know, you need to kind of, uh, you know, swing that in a little bit. So that's a very important thing to make sure that you got everything square before you start building a house on top of it because Things will get wonky if you start on a non-square foundation. All right, so we're gonna put down our last piece of pressure-treated sill plate. That's what this is called, this is a sill plate. And this is uh, what is going to hold up our entire house. Uh, if you find that your foundation isn't level, uh, you can use little uh, wedges here. They can be uh, little pieces of pressure-treated uh, wood that you've uh, shaved down into a, a level. Uh, I'm sorry, you shaved down into a wedge. You could use pieces of cedar. I suppose sometimes people will use cedar. I usually like using pieces of um, uh, pressure-treated wood just because you know that it is going to be uh, you know good with the, uh, the condensation and everything. So we have our sill plate down. That's great. Now we have a nice surface from which to build off of. And the way that I like building is uh, working in bays. So we're going to be creating uh, a floor joist, and then we're going to be creating posts off of it, and then we're going to be creating the, uh, the ceiling uh, rafters at the top of it. So we're going to start by creating our floor joist, and we're going to do that with three pieces of wood. We're gonna have two long pieces, and I would suggest that these pieces of wood be something like a two by eight, or maybe a two by 10. And my, my microphone is like scratching at me. Excuse me, I'm gonna move it for a sec. Why am I having so much trouble with the mic today? Okay, there we go. I would suggest these be like a two by eight or a two by 10, something that's long enough to go all the way across your, your foundation there. And then we're gonna need another uh, board that's gonna go in the middle of them, kind of sandwiched in the middle there, like this. And this board that's in the middle, it could be another two by eight, it could be another two by 10, but it doesn't have to be. You could actually take a two by four or a couple of two by fours and put one at the top, one at the bottom. The idea for this is that it's creating a spacer and it is uh, adding a little bit of uh, more rigidity to the thing. So what we're gonna do, and I would uh, oftentimes work right on the sill because it's a nice, you finally, you know, it's all rocky and dirt and pits all over here. You finally have a nice uh, flat space to work on. And I'm gonna start hammering boards together using another tool. I'm gonna demo for you guys, a hammer. Well, actually, I already showed you the hammer. Uh, we're gonna be uh, attaching them together, but again, we're gonna be using the hot glue instead. So we're gonna be taking uh, the center board and it is going to be attached in the middle such that we can have enough room for our posts later on. We're gonna be putting some posts on the side. We wanna have a gap on either end that is whatever size uh, those posts are. Now, these are all popsicle sticks. They're all the same widths. Uh, I mentioned that the, uh, these uh, floor rafters should probably be two by tens, but our posts don't need to be two by, uh, they don't need to be two by tens. They could be two by sixes or two by fours. Uh, it really doesn't matter. For a small structure like what we're talking about, two by fours would be totally fine. So the distance, uh, this extra space you wanna leave on the end there, uh, a two by four is three and a half inches wide. So you'd wanna leave a three and a half inch gap on the end there, or maybe a little bit more, uh, just so you have a little bit of play in there. So whatever you, you, you choose, we're gonna be working on these guys here. Now, I would suggest not working on them by setting one side on one side of your foundation the other on the other side because as you're hammering you're going to be bending this thing down and that would make it so you have kind of a bow to your board so you're going to want to be actually working up on the sill over here so it has full support the entire way across now if those uh, bolts are sticking through and they're kind of getting into your uh, your wood you can put little uh, spacer pieces here's some little bits of scrap you can put some scrap pieces up there 
across the whole run of it and that will help to support your board. And you just want to make sure you have plenty of these support pieces so as you're hammering, again, it is not, uh, it's not bending. We don't have any bolts coming through so I'm just going to go commando and uh, put it right on the sill there. So we're going to nail together our middle piece like this. And again, I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing, but you want to make sure you have proper uh, gaps on the edge. So we've just secured these two boards together. And now what we're going to do is put another one there. So we've got these little slots at the ends, okay? So we're going to, it's kind of a weird way of doing it. Instead of putting the board on top and nailing it, I'm putting the glue down first and then we, uh, then we put it on. All right. If you ever want to work in popsicle sticks, I think Elmer's glue is actually the preferred method, but hot glue is much faster for this video. All right, so what we've created here is what's referred to as a box beam. All right, and these are going to be our floor joists. They can hold an enormous amount of weight, you know, because you made them out of a two by eight or a two by 10. And we're going to make a, a small house that has three of these guys going across the floor here. Okay, so let's create another one. We're going to leave that one right there. And I've got some other pre-cut boards here, which reminds me, another tool that you're going to want to have if you're going to build your own house is a saw. I would recommend a power saw, but I have, uh, I have built parts of houses just using uh, hand saws because I didn't have any electricity on the site. Uh, so you will want to have some kind of a saw for, you know, cutting these things to length. All right, so we're going to make our third box beam here. As you're doing this, you're going to be wanting to use another tool, which I'll show you in a moment, which is called a square. And, uh, and the square is really important for making sure that as you're putting these things together, you are creating nice, uh, you know, perfectly nice square angles on your, on your beams. Well, <laughs> that's a problem you don't have with nails is that, well, I guess you could nail this to your, uh, you could nail it to your fingers, <laughs> but I'm gluing it to my fingers right now. All right. You want to pull out more chicks, River? All right, so we're gonna put on our, our next board. This moves a lot faster than when you're nailing them together in real life. All right, so we've got our next box beam right there. And when I mentioned the carpenter square, uh, that's this tool right here. Uh, it's just a metal ruler with a little sliding uh, bit on it here. And this is great for making sure that uh, all of your the edges of your beams all line up. Actually, this is a little, that's a more of a messy one, but I'll just illustrate right here. We want to take this and make sure that this board and this board, you know, they're, they're lined up across in this dimension and we want to make sure that, you know, nothing sticks out on the top. This is just a great tool for kind of squaring everything up, making sure everything is nice and pretty and perfect for your, for your build. Okay, so we've got two box beams there. We're going to do one more box beam. Same way as before. I'll put this one over here. Oh, it's, okay, this is our small uh, little bantam chick and we, we've been calling this one BB. <laughs> I love how the, the, the heads do that, like I stay in the same place kind of thing. You, you okay? All right. All right, so that's one of our other ones. All right, so we're going to do the third box beam. This is the, the last box beam we're going to be working on. Incidentally, as, as fast as this is going, I know that this might be a little bit slow for many of you guys out there in YouTube land. And to that, all I would say is that if you're getting a little bit bored watching this video, I would highly recommend against building your own home because you probably don't have the patience for it. Uh, and it's just a reality of things. If you, if you can't sit through a video of someone doing something like this in, in this kind of an accelerated fashion, I think you just don't have the uh, the patience to uh, to do it in real life. So I would, uh, you know, maybe you are just stuck in the, if you want a house, you gotta pay hundreds of thousands of dollars model. But for the rest of you guys who are willing to put in a little bit of time and uh, mess with some of these uh, hot glue gun strands, uh, you know, you can save hundreds of thousands of dollars doing a lot of this stuff yourself and make a structure that is gonna be in a lot of ways superior to the, the average house that you can get. I know houses cost a lot of money and you think you, that you might be getting quality with that, but a lot of houses, you know, I see that the way they're built and I've done a lot of building myself, they, they are always using like the junkiest quality materials and, uh, you know, just putting it up in the cheapest way possible. And the, the price of the house doesn't necessarily in any way reflect the value or the quality of that house. When you're building uh, something like 
like this yourself, you know that you're doing it with quality materials, you know that you're doing a good job, uh, and uh, you can get a much higher quality end product than you can if you are you know, paying someone else to do it. All right, so uh, what's next? We've got these box beams, they're all here, and the next thing to do is to attach them to the foundation. We would be doing that just with nails. The type of nails that we would be using on a project like this uh, are uh, galvanized nails, uh, are, are good because then they're not gonna stain your boards, but it's not necessary because they're gonna be inside. The nails that we'd be using to uh, attach these guys down to our sill plate would probably be something like a, a 16D nail. Uh, 16 uh, refers to the length of the nail. We're gonna be using nails that go between eight and 16. We'll probably be using 8D nails, 10D nails, um, maybe some 12D nails, and 16D nails. 16D nails are nice and long, and you can use those to uh, hammer down at an angle to get these uh, um, floor, uh, uh, floor joists down into the sill plate. And we're going to be using the 8 and the 10D nails, which are shorter, uh, for other projects that we're going to be doing here. We'll also be using some 6D nails, actually. Who do we got here? Is that number one? Uh, that's not number one. It's no. chubby. All right, we've got uh, three of these black chickens, and I... I can only tell them apart when they're next to each other. We call this one chubby. This one, I think, is a female. It yeah. has, doesn't have much of a ridge on there. All right. All right, so I am going to just hot glue this thing down. But like I mentioned, uh, if you were doing this in real life, not with popsicle sticks, this would be something you'd want to do with 16D nails. And as you were uh, hammering this in, we've got these little slots here on the edges. And we want to make sure that these slots can still take our posts when we're going to be creating posts and the posts want to slide in there. Now, if we're putting nails in here at an angle, it's going to have a tendency of pushing these two boards together. So as you're nailing these guys in, you're going to want to take just some piece of scrap and put the piece of scrap in there. Well, if I can do a better job. Just put the piece of scrap in there, maybe even put a little bit of cardboard to add a little bit of extra thickness. So when you're nailing these together, you can't squeeze these, uh, this little slot down so that you can't eventually put your post in. I've done it before where I have made it so that this was really tight and I'm trying to put the post in later on. And you know, the posts are you know, probably gonna be you know, a good six, seven feet tall. It's hard to like sledgehammer a post down into this thing when it's, you know, way up above your head and it's going to have an angled cut on the top too. So do everything you can to make sure that you do not make it so that these, uh, these little gaps get uh, crunched down. We're going to glue this guy down too. Put some glue on there. All right. Who do you, you got a new chick? Which one's this? Yeah, this, crazy hair. this is the crazy hair one. We think this, is, this one's got like a little tuft of hair that's starting when it was a chick, it didn't have this crazy tuft of hair. But, oh, I don't think they, you gotta look at this camera here. Um, uh, but after about a week or so, it started growing this crazy hair on the top. So I think this is gonna be one of those chickens with the crazy uh, mop top no, thing. Crazy hair. Yeah, I think, well, that's what we're calling it. All right, I'm adjusting my mic a little bit. I don't know, it's just bothering me. Okay, so we've got one on either end and we're gonna put one in the middle. Now you would wanna measure this to make sure that it's perfect, uh, you know, uh, but, I'm going to eyeball it because this is like a little model. And uh, we're not going to be able to attach this the whole way down. You know, these guys you'd be putting nails in all the way along, but we will be able to attach this just at the ends. So I'm going to put some glue at our ends there. And I'll attach that down. And again, remember, you really want to make sure you don't clamp down these little slots. Now this gets to the point where you're starting to see uh, where our floor is going to be here. And this is where you can be creative and decide how big you want to make your structure. The distance between these things is going to be just around three feet or so, maybe a little bit under three feet. The way I usually do it is, uh, this is two bays. Here's one bay, here's two bays. Uh, I will usually think about in terms of uh, three bays are going to be 10 feet. So each of these is cumulatively uh, going to be like, a, a, three and a third feet, three and a third feet, three and a third feet, accounting for the thickness of all these two bys, which is four and a half inches for three of them stacked up because each two by piece of lumber is one and a half inches. So one and a half plus one and a half plus, plus one and a half is four and a half inches thickness. So you want to have, a, you know, about three feet distance between these guys. You know, no more than that, maybe a little bit less. And this is where, where I, like I said, you can get creative because this foundation, I've made kind of a square here for our illustration, but this foundation could be made however long you want it. I mean, this could be like a 30 mile long foundation and it's like a long tube house. Uh, and 
uh, it really just comes down to you know what your needs are and what your budget is. Uh, so uh, I would suggest something like maybe you know 10 feet long, 20 feet long. Uh, you, the way I've created this, this is about six and a half feet long. Uh, so I'd, I'd recommend something that's like maybe three bays long. This is two bays long, uh, three bays long, or six bays long, or something like that. But you can just kind of add however many bays you want. It could be six bays, seven bays, eight bays. Oh, we got a new one. Oh, this is number one. This is the first one that was born. And uh, this one's definitely, I think this is the alpha of all of them. It definitely always wants to uh, stay higher than all the rest. Okay, so we've got this uh, down here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put down our floorboards. Now, I have a whole box right here of floorboards, all my popsicle sticks. So uh, we're just gonna pull some out of here and I'm gonna be grabbing them straight out of here because uh, these I don't like to pre-cut as I'm putting them in. And the reason for that is because, uh, you know, you, you measure things, you cut them out, and you know, things are, things are never 100% perfect. So uh, what I like to do is put the boards down on the, on the floor of the deck, and then I take a circular saw, a hand circular saw, and I cut off all the loose ends. So what we're gonna do is uh, just start laying these guys down here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of a fistful here. So we got plenty of them here some scrap and we're just going to go right along now as you're going along here uh, it's a really good idea uh, to keep taking measurements and making sure that your uh, your boards aren't getting a little bit wonky because if they consistently have like a little bit more of a gap on one side I'm going to like exaggerate it here but if they consistently keep having like too much gap on one side and not enough on the other you know you could get it to a point where you know this side is way ahead of this side so you're going to want to keep as you're going across keep uh, taking kind of sanity measurements where you're measuring from here back and make sure that you are uh, you know keeping straight and if you're not keeping straight you uh, you know just add a little bit of extra thickness on one side or the other now for these boards what I would recommend you know you could do these, do these with two by fours or two by sixes uh, you're gonna have little gaps between them if you do it that way if you can get tongue and groove board uh, tongue and groove two by sixes that is really an ideal way of doing it because the tongues and the grooves are going to uh, help to spread out the load all over it so if you're standing on one part of the floor you're transmitting your weight uh, so that you're not just standing on the board that you're on, but you're also being carried by the boards that are around it. So I'd recommend tongue and groove boards if you can, but they could just be two by sixes, two by fours, uh, if you wanted to do it that way as well. The tongue and groove also makes it so that dust and things aren't falling through the boards, and that's good if you want to use the, the space underneath for you know storage. If you don't care what's under there, I guess you don't care if dirt's falling through, but you know if you're going to be storing food down there, you don't want to have a bunch of dirt from people's feet falling through. Alternately, I guess you could do the whole deck and then put down a I don't know, plywood or even a carpet or something like that that might help. But if you can get tongue and groove board, that's, I think, the way to go. And we're going to be nailing these as we go uh, from one end to the other. Now, we're going to skip the beginning here where the, uh, the posts are going to be. And we're going to start just, just at that gap. So, again, I, this is a little different than nailing because I put the glue down first and then I put the board down as opposed to putting the board down and then nailing it down. All right, we got our first one in. Like I said, if you're doing this, I'd recommend a tape measure and you're constantly measuring like the distance that I've got here is three inches on that side and this side actually looks like it's a little less than three inches. So if this side is a little closer and this side's a little farther, this is the side I want to add a little bit of gaps onto over here in order to make them so that they are uh, still uh, straight by the time we get to the other side. All right, we'll do another one. All right. And when you're doing this part of the, uh, the process in your build, this is when it really starts feeling like you've got, you know, a, a house structure there. Because you start to have a floor, and it, it's a really nice feeling at this point because when you get here, you're starting to have a place to put your tools, <laughs> a place to put your boxes and nails where they're not in the dirt. Uh, you're going to uh, start having a nice flat surface to work on, which is nice. And it really starts feeling like, hey, you know, I, I've actually built something here. This is like, this is a real thing <laughs> at this point. So it's, uh, it's always kind of uh, energizing at this point. All right. And I'm going to do the entire floor. We're not going to build the whole structure today. We're going to do like representative bits of it. But we are going to do the entire floor because it's pretty... I mean, honestly, this is really fast going in. Again, if you're feeling bored watching this, 
I don't think that you would survive doing your own house. So, you know, feel free to click away. There will be no loss for you. All right. Now I'm not going to be able to fit in the last board. Uh, what you would do when you get to this end, uh, you know, with your actual, you know, build, what uh, you would, uh, you know, be uh, measuring, uh, you know, how much extra excess board you have on there and you would be uh, you know, you know, chopping off anything that you need. What I'm going to do, and I, uh, I guess this is my version of a saw, we're going to have small pieces between these boards here. So I'm going to use my circular saw right there. Oh, my pencil. The carpenter's pencil is very important and a, a way of sharpening it, which could just be a knife. All right, measure twice, cut once, but I'm just going to measure once. Or, and cut once. There we go. All right, so these boards at the end, we're going to put these here and we're going to leave those gaps visible, okay? So put some glue across there and some glue across there. And again, I'm just kind of doing this as a representation. We're not going to do the, in, the entire thing. All right, so we've left the gap and we are uh, just filling in the floorboards there. So circular saw, and this is great because you can be up here and you can kneel on it and you, you, you start doing your circular sawing work up there. Did you want to play with the chicks anymore, River? I cared all these nails, so you did not want to. Okay, they're all, they're all done with that. One interesting thing that we've done with the chicks, I think it's interesting anyway, is uh, we have added uh, a stick in there, like a branch, for them to kind of hang out and roost on, and they seem to like that. All right, all right, so th there we go. So you can s very clearly see our gaps here, uh, our slots. And now the next step of what we're gonna do is start creating our posts on the sides. And we're gonna, for this structure, we're gonna need six posts um, for either side. I'm gonna get rid of some of my scrap here. And uh, when I'm mentioning scrap, you can see here's a little pile that we've got over here. This is from creating all of the, uh, you know, the pieces that I kind of pre-made here. Whenever you're, uh, whenever you're working, whenever it's possible to, uh, you know, make something out of scrap instead of cutting a new board, you're going to save yourself a ton of money th that way. When I cut this thing, I was left with this amount of popsicle stick left. What I should have done, uh, and I would, certainly would have done in real life, is instead of grabbing another popsicle stick for this shorty, I would have taken this and used that to make that. This is a victory, having scrap that's like practically nothing. And this will be like for, you know, keeping yourself warm in the winter. This is like, you know, your first year of uh, you know, wood for wood burning and everything. So it doesn't go to waste, but the highest uh, value of it is for construction materials. So whenever you can use your scrap for stuff, definitely use your scrap for stuff. And even short things like this, I, you know, I, I think this is kind of a throwaway, but even short things like this, you'd be surprised how many uses you get for little, little things. I, I mean, uh, proportional. If I actually had a piece of uh, scrap that was this long, I would probably get rid of it. But uh, th th this sort of represents a piece of scrap that's like a foot and a half, maybe two feet long. That's, that could be a useful piece of scrap, especially when we get to some of the little wedges that we're going to be putting into the uh, into our roof rafters. Okay. But for right now, we're not working on the roof rafters. What we're working on is our, our posts. And our posts are being made in a way that is similar to how we made our, our box beams on the floor here. They're going to be uh, three pieces of wood tripled up. And these are the pieces that we've got, just like this, all right? So we have one piece in the center that's longer and then two pieces on the side. And you see that the center piece, it overextends on the bottom and it overextends on the top. And the reason it overextends on the bottom is it's going to slide down into that slot. And the reason it overextends on the top, I kind of put this in backwards, is that we're creating another kind of tab on the top that is going to later on accept our uh, roof uh, rafters, okay? So let's set these guys together. Now, the way that it, it sticks out on the bottom, all that really matters is that it doesn't bottom out here. So you, you want to err on the side of this being a little bit on the short side, so you're not bottoming, up, bottoming out. You don't want the bottom of this to actually be touching your pressure treated sill plate. You want all the load to be carried on these, uh, these side pieces by sitting down, uh, sitting down right there. All right, so I'm gonna move my pre-cut pieces over here and let's start gluing this guy together. And by gluing, I mean nailing. And let, let's do it the way you would do it. I'd be working up on the deck at this point, All right? Because our deck is our nice flat surface and we might as well take advantage of that. All right. 
course. I say that and then the first thing I do is pick it up. <laughs> all right, so we hammer this thing together like that. We'd put all our nails in on this side and then we'd flip it over and we're gonna put our other corresponding piece just like that. The angles on the tops of these, I chose to build it at uh, with 45 degree angles. So we're gonna have a roof that has a 45 degree angle on it. That would be what's considered a 12-12 pitch. That's pretty uh, steep pitch. It's gonna drop snow really easy. You don't have to have a pitch that's uh, that severe at all. Like uh, something that is like a 7-12 pitch or a 9-12 pitch or something like that is gonna shed snow perfectly well. Um, you know, 712 is a little bit on the shy side, but uh, the, uh, the, the point is, is wh whatever you decide, you're building that angle into these guys here. And we'll talk a in a little bit about how to decide what you want that angle to be. So we've got this, and just to kind of show you for illustration purposes, uh, well, you know what? We gotta build those little spaces over here. Let's jump back and finish this up. And this is not a, a, at all uncommon when you're building, is uh, you, know, you forget a step and you gotta go back. I'm using up some of that scrap because we got to fill in those pieces over there. Wow, I, I dropped that off the edge of a cliff. <laughs> All right, so put this guy in here. Because uh, these are spacers, they fill in the floor, but they are also making sure that our, uh, our uh, posts have something to rest on. Okay, let's get another piece of scrap. Make sure we don't make it too big or anything. Okay, just like that. We hold it here and run our circular saw on the side of the deck. Oh, wow. River, would you grab that one for me? That one shot like that's probably like half a mile away. All right, got it, thank you. All right, so we're gonna put in this other spacer here, just like that. Okay, so now that we have our spacers in, we can put in our first post. And you'll notice this angle on the top, we want that angling towards the center of our structure, so it's gonna slide in like that. Just like this, okay? And the way to nail this in is, uh, you'll notice on this side, you've got, uh, you've got some access to the side of this uh, uh, floor, uh, uh, floor joist here. And we've got the same kind of access over on the other side here. So once we slide this board down in there, we're gonna take nails from either side underneath our floor decking and we're gonna grab it from in there, okay? What I'm gonna to do to secure is I'm just gonna put a glob of hot glue. But before I do that, I wanna illustrate something to you guys. It's very important when you put these in that they be straight up and down and not like crooked or like bowing out or something like that. So this is another tool that is very important to have. This is a level, and this has some bubbles in it. And the, the middle bubble here lets you know whether something's flat, like that. And this bubble up here allows you to know whether something is straight up and down, which is called plumb. And we wanna make sure that these uh, posts here are, are completely plumb. So I'm, I'm gonna, uh, when we do this, I'm gonna hold uh, this up against the board, and we're gonna play the board side to side until I see the bubble at the top of this level is exactly in the middle. And that way I'll know that this is plumb straight up and down vertical. Uh, what I need to do because I'm using hot glue though is I gotta put the glue in first and then we'll plumb it up. That's why I wanted to explain it first. All right, so post goes in with the glue and before the glue sets or dry or no, cools. It's hot glue so it cools. All right, so that is perfectly plumb straight up and down just like that. So we got one, one of our posts in there. I, I put the hot glue gun up against my styrofoam foundation. I thought it might've been melting it, but I'm not. Okay, so let's build another post right here. The one thing that we're not gonna do uh, multiple versions of is we're not gonna be doing the, uh, the ceiling rafters because they take a little bit of time and I don't think that we need to illustrate that th uh, three times in a row. We're just gonna do one of those, but we are gonna do all these posts. So we put this down on the deck and we are, again, it's kind of backwards because we put the thing that holds it on there before we put the board down, but all right, do this. And I'm just eyeballing these, you know, it's not the best way to do it. You would obviously want to be measuring all this stuff out, making sure it's perfect for you. All right, let me flip it over. And this is again where we're doing, uh, we're using this carpenter's square because we want to make sure 
If you can see as I'm doing this, we want to make sure that these are lined up properly like that. And we can do that by using the carpenter's square straight across and make sure that these guys are lined up. For the purposes of this project, I'm eyeballing it. This goes on and as you're doing this just just take it slow and always make sure that you're not putting things on backwards or whatever you know like these have a, an angle at the top of them you want to make sure that the angle is always facing the same direction you don't put the board on backwards or anything okay all right so we get another one and we're gonna stick that right in here so i'll put the glue into the slot first again the way that you would secure these is you drop it in you would put the uh, level on it, you'd make sure it's straight up and down plumb, and then you would nail it in like that. Okay, so we got two of them. Let's make another in here. And I gotta say, in the same way that the the floor start makes it start feeling like, wow, you know, I'm making a real I'm making a real structure here. Uh, once you start getting these posts on, you get another one of those feelings of, you know, you get the sense of the height and the size of this room that you're creating. And it's another sort of, uh, you know, one of those moments when you can, I don't know, I don't like to rest on my laurels, but sometimes it's nice to just kind of sit back and appreciate the amazing job that you're doing as you're doing this. Because what we're doing right now, <laughs> what I'm doing right now is playing with popsicle sticks. But what we're talking about doing is, you know, doing something that people say you're not supposed to be able to do. I mean, that is the common wisdom in our culture is that, you know, if you want a house, you gotta pay someone that knows what they're doing to make it. You know, it's not something that you do on your own. And, you know, we're going against that uh, as we are, you know, uh, doing this project. And uh, it's nice to just kind of sit back and, uh, you know, soak that in a little bit that you are accomplishing what people say is the unaccomplishable as you do this. And what is it? I mean, it's a pile of lumber and some tools. Uh, I've already shown you all the tools that we are using in this. The only one I didn't uh, show you yet is the, uh, the power drill because I, I kind of forgot to bring it in for the video. But you, you don't need a whole heck of a lot of tools and the, uh, the building materials. I know at the time of this recording, lumber is pretty expensive. But again, if you're comparing this to the cost of buying a house built by someone else for you, you are gonna save so much money on it. All right, I'm gonna put this one in next. You know, even, even though lumber is kind of expensive, you're gonna be saving so much money on it. All right. <laughs> Feels funny kind of plumbing these, these little things. Now you're really starting to feel like there's a room there. Or I'm starting to feel that way anyway. All right, so we've got two more of these posts to do, and then we're gonna start talking about our, our ceiling. But before we get, get to the, uh, the, the roof rafters, we're gonna do a very important step, which is uh, getting all these guys straight. Because uh, you know, as much as we're making them plumb like this way, they're not leaning one way or the other, they're kind of fanning around this way and that. This one's kind of bending that way, this one's bending out this way. We're gonna talk about how you make it so that these guys are nice, straight up and down in every measurable way. And it's really not that big a deal. It just uses some, some scrap wood and a little bit of your time. All right. So we got number five here. As we're getting to this point, I imagine you guys are starting to be able to see how expandable this is, where you can you can really make this tunnel as long as you like. And let's say this is like eight feet across or 10 feet across. 10 feet is a good size because dimensional uh, lumber, you can get 10 foot wide uh, boards for the bottom. Uh, eight feet would be perfectly great too. Eight feet might feel a little bit cla claustrophobic. I think 10 feet is a, kind of a good feeling where you don't feel like if you're standing here, you don't feel like that wall is right up in your face. Uh, but uh, yeah, 10 feet wide is a pretty good height here. And uh, you know, for these guys, all these posts could be made out of eight foot long two by fours uh, here, uh, because uh, you know, even th this is the longest one that kind of determines the, the length of all these guys. You know, if, if you know, the average person is like six foot, you know, maybe a little bit higher than that, eight feet uh, from uh, all the way down here to up here is gonna be plenty of room for you to, uh, you know, anybody to stand up. Plus we're gonna have cathedral ceilings in here. All right, let's get our 
last guy here done. I gotta admit, I, I talk about working on the deck, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky working on the deck because this is a miniature and I've got these giant hands trying to do it. So I, I think I'm probably gonna be working on the, uh, on our uh, ceiling rafters on the, uh, on the ground over here. Cause this is uh, getting a little tight for my clunky hands here. All right, I'll put the last one in here. Right, drop it in. There we go. Make sure that it is nice and plumb. Yes, it is. There we go. Okay. So now, this is at this point. This is when you stand up here and you kind of start walking around and feeling like, wow, you know, this is. A, oh, they're, they're still cooling a little bit. No, no, no. Oh yeah, River caught. River caught me. See, I'm jabbering. I put it in backwards. Good catch, River. <laughs> If you uh, do put in something backwards, there is a tool that you can get, and I would recommend that you have it. It's called the cat's claw. Uh, it looks a little bit like, like a hammer with this kind of back on it, uh, and you can use it to go in and grab nails that you accidentally put in that you wanted to pull back out like that. I would have needed to use a cat's claw on that. And what you do is you take the, the two prongs of the cat's claw, you put them right up against the nail and you tap the back of the cat's claw and you get underneath and you start pulling the nail out. Once you get it out enough to use the back of your hammer, you can use the back of your hammer. And as you're pulling it out, uh, you get it to a certain point. If you put a piece of scrap wood under the hammer. You can keep pulling it up straight and you'll notice if you use a piece of scrap wood to pull the, uh, the nails out, uh, you'll be able to pull them out nice and straight and you won't ruin the nails and you'll actually be able to keep the nails and reuse them afterwards. Thank you for that catch river. So I'd also highly recommend you don't jabber with people incessantly uh, when you are doing this because you can make mistakes like that. And I've made mistakes like that, you know, on my builds and they're always fixable. So no worries. All right, so next uh, we are thinking about getting our, our roof on, uh, but before we do that, what we wanna do is get all these guys nice and straight. So we want some more scrap. Oh, here, here's uh, scrap stuff. Now, uh, I'm gonna be using these, which are sort of like functionally like, I guess two by fours, and you can use two by fours for this. You could also use like any piece of scrap wood. You can use one by threes, also known as, known as strapping. That stuff is super cheap. It's great for kind of like lining things up. You can get a bundle of it for way less than you can buying a bundle of two by fours. So, but whatever we're, we're using these uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, whatever we're using for these, uh, the point is what you're doing is you're uh, creating uh, diagonal lines uh, in order to uh, add rigidity to the structure. You know, from uh, construction, from building, tr the triangle is kind of like the strongest shape that you can create because uh, a triangle, you can't compress it in any way. If you take a, well, let's pretend that there's another connection at the top here. If you take a square and it has some shear force to the top, you can kind of you know, push it one way or the other. Again, pretending that there's a piece at the top here. You can kind of collapse it one way or collapse it the other. You know, it can deform, but if you have a triangle, uh, the only way it's gonna get wrecked is by actually physically destroying the sides of it. So triangle is a very strong shape and we're gonna use triangles in order to make all these guys nice and straight, okay? Um, I'm, because I only have two hands and they're giant, uh, I'm going to be kind of eyeballing this, but what we would be doing is putting a level on these guys and watching the level to make sure that all these guys are nice and plumb. Okay. But I'm just going to be eyeballing it just for the purposes of what we're doing right now. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to attach uh, the bottom of this down to our sill plate down here. Okay. We're going to put a nail right in here and we're going to attach this right here. So it goes diagonally up towards, uh, towards this first post here. Okay. And I do appreciate that the angle of this camera is, well, I guess I can kind of modify the camera a little bit to bring you around so you can see this a little bit better. I know that doesn't help. Well, you know what? Let's bring it around over here. I think that shows it a little bit better. Okay. So you can see we've got this diagonal line going from uh, the sill plate all the way up to here. And what that gives us the opportunity to do is make this board here perfectly plumb. Okay. So it looks like this one needs to be pushed in a little bit. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. You really should be putting a level on there uh, to find out. Uh, you'd have one person holding the level, holding this in the right place, and then somebody else puts a nail in here and then they drive the nail in when the second person says, yep, it's, it's perfectly straight up and down plumb. Using a glue gun again, it makes it a little difficult because I can't drive. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you've helped me with this. Rivers helped me with this. So your person doesn't have to be another adult. It could be, you know, a kid 
or, well, I guess it's adults or kids, that's what you got. All right, so we're gonna put the hot glue there and then I'm gonna hold this right here. Now you don't have to wait for your nails to cool, <laughs> but we do have to wait for the glue to cool a little bit before I let go of this. And what this is doing is this is making sure that this post here, this, uh, this uh, is like our reference post, and we're going to set all the other posts off of this one. Is it? Okay, it's set. All right, so the next step is we're not gonna do any more diagonal lines, but what we are gonna do is get a board across the top here, and we'll be able to use this to straighten this guy here up, okay? So same as before, we're gonna nail it in on one side, right over here. And it helps to have somebody to hold this board because at this point the board, you know, these could be heavy and someone's, it's held at one end, but it's gonna to wanna to like fall over here. So it, it, it's kind of helpful if you have somebody to kind of just hold the weight over there. And then you're gonna have someone on this post and it could, this post person could be the same person that's, uh, you know, kind of holding up this other board or whatever, you know, the more people, the better sometimes, although sometimes the more people, the worse. Um, what we're gonna do is, uh, uh, you know, get this in, into position. All right. I guess what I'll do is just kind of pop this in there. All right, just like that. I usually like to do this on the outside of the structure first, but there, there, there is an argument to be made for doing this on the inside of the structure, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But okay, is that good? Feels like it's cooled. Okay, so now we've got perfectly plumb, perfectly plumb. Let's get this last one over here. Same thing, you'll have someone looking at the level. You'll have someone uh, with a hammer on there. Get that one plumb and drive the nails in. Yeah, that's the thing. You have to take these off later. These are just temporary, and it's a little hard to take them off with the hot glue. All right. I've never actually built a house with hot glue before, so it's a learning curve for me as well. <laughs> All right, that seems cool. And we're gonna do the same thing over to the other side, just kind of quickly. I won't jabber through it quite as much. Where, well, you know what? Uh, on this side, what I'll do is I, I will do it from the inside. All right. The reason that it's nice to do it from the inside is eventually we're gonna be boarding these guys up on the outside and all these boards that I just stuck out here, they have to be removed in order to do the boarding on the outside. The reason it's nice to do it on the outside is you just have easier access to the sill plate and everything. But uh, eventually what you have to do is you gotta transfer this stuff to the inside anyway. All right, so we're gonna nail that in on the bottom there just like that. And what we're gonna do on, on this one is we're gonna make our middle one be the reference one. That's the one we wanna get straight first. And this one is pretty heavily leaning to, to that side. So I gotta, actually this won't be too hard because I, I can just put the glue on this like that and then pull that straight and hold it together while it cools. All right. Well, no, it wasn't cool yet. There's a lot, actually a lot of stress in this one, and that's fine. You know, these things are always gonna wanna be, you know, doing their own thing. You know, as we were building the box beams at the bottom, you know, there might've been a little bit of crookedness to it, and that crookedness is getting expressed in this post here, but you just force it back. And as long as you keep checking yourself as you're going, and you just kinda keep forcing things back, uh, nothing ever is allowed to get completely crazy out of hand. Okay, that one is now cool. So uh, this post is uh, not straight yet. This one is nice and plumb. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a board across and we'll use this as a reference to straighten up both of these guys. Okay, so I'll put a little bit of glue right in the middle here. We'll attach this board here. And as we're doing this, we're also rigidifying this sort of like in and out kind of uh, motion, like uh, the boards are sort of like, they're, uh, they're pulling everything into uh, like a straight alignment as you go. We're sort of weaving everything together. All right, let's get some glue under here. This, this one here actually looks pretty close to plumb as it is, but you always wanna just put it under the, the level and check. This one here is leaning out quite a bit. All right, so we'll do that. Bring that in. That looks pretty good, we'll let that cool. And as soon as this cools, what we have at this point are six posts and they are perfectly plumb 
in this direction and we've got them perfectly plumb in that direction, which means these are perfectly plumb, you know, as much as, you know, as close as perfect as you can get to. These are perfectly plumb posts. That's a lot of alliteration with the letter P in there. Okay, I'll get some of my, uh, my nail strands out of there. Okay, so the next step here is to start working on the, uh, the roof of this. So I've got over here and I'm just gonna rotate the camera around. Well, you know what? And I just bring the mountain to Muhammad here. Is that gonna trigger anybody? All right, let's bring this over here. Okay, what I've got is, I'm gonna come around to this side, there we go. All right, what I've got here is the, uh, the roof truss. It's just sort of laid out here, and uh, what I need to do is just kind of recreate this. So I'm gonna be taking it apart a piece at a time. We're gonna be building it here, and then we're gonna be setting it up on here. Now, I would highly recommend, if you are doing this in the real world, don't do it on the ground, even if the ground is flat. The best place to do it is right up on your deck, because the distance between uh, the edges of your roof rafters out here is supposed to be the exact same distance as the edge of your deck here. It's supposed to be straight up from there to there. So if you're taking your, uh, your roof rafter and you build it right here so that the edges are lined up with your deck and you build it so it is sitting right here, uh, you're automatically, it's almost like a template that you've got it here and uh, you're gonna make sure that this dimension on your, uh, on your roof rafters is, you know, it's gonna fit. Uh, and, that's a, and that's a nice thing. For me, I can't, I just can't work in here because it's too small of a space. So I'm gonna be working out here, but that's fine. Okay, so we've got, this is our first layer here. And the next step is we need to pop these guys down here. And this is something I, I just kind of design out right on the deck for myself. This piece that I'm putting in the middle that turns uh, what is kind of like a V shape or a lambda, if you know the Greek alphabet, what, what turns that into an A is called the collar tie. And that is a very important piece. That is what keeps uh, your roof from pulling apart. As you get load on the top of your roof, it wants to push down. It wants to take your, uh, your lambda and it wants to crush it down into a flat line. I mean, that's what gravity's wanting to do. So by putting that collar tie board in the middle, it's grabbing from both sides. It's pulling it back and it's keeping it from uh, it's keeping it from splaying out and falling apart. So this is a very important piece here. And a lot of these other guys are just sort of, they're spacers that go in here to uh, hold it together. So this is kind of the first thing that we're doing. And uh, you'll notice that we have gaps here on the ends. And the reason for that is that that is, we're gonna be creating these slots that go around all these guys, okay? So we're gonna start gluing this together. And honest to God, uh, this is harder with popsicle sticks than it is with uh, real boards because the popsicle sticks are so light, my fingers are just so clunky and I'm pushing it around a lot. Um, I actually feel like this is a lot easier in real life <laughs> to do than, than with the popsicle sticks, but I'll do my best to not let you guys down here because the apocalypse is coming and we gotta get this popsicle stick uh, shelter together. <laughs> All right, so we got, that, we got this guy down. At this point, we've attached these two, and we're gonna put this other spacer in right here. All right. One other thing that I would mention is as you are deciding pieces for these, these long sides here, these guys here, you're gonna to wanna to look down these guys and see if there's any kind of a bend to it, if there's a crown. If the board bends up in one direction or down in the other, you want to have that upward bend uh, facing upwards uh, because then that way when the board inevitably kind of gets crunched down a little bit, it kind of counteracts the, the natural bend uh, to it. For a moment, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and just kind of illustrate to you what I was talking about in terms of building this on your deck, is you'd want to build it kind of like in here, like that. So you got, actually it might be a little easier to see if I do it like this, I think. 
you want to kind of build it on your deck like this. So you can see that this edge lines up there and this edge lines up here. And you can just be sure that what you're building is actually working out uh, in terms of it's going to fit on the top. As I do this, what I would oftentimes do is just draw right on the deck, draw my whole, uh, my whole shape right there and kind of nail one together as I go. I'm going to pull this back out and we're going to put the collar tie in there because the dimensions of this are not, they're not super important. All that matters in the end is that all of your, your trusses, it just matters that they look the same. It, it doesn't matter what shape they are, I mean, well, to some degree. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly what shape they are, but the idea is you just want them to all be exactly the same. So you can see how we're putting it together here. The next bit is going to be putting in these little spacers here. So I'm going to pull it out so I can do that. But you can just kind of, you can create this just as you, as you go, make it up as you go and just make sure that uh, everything's nice and tight and everything fits. All right, we got that there. And again, it just lays right in like that. And what we would do is just take the next piece and, uh, and lay it on. Now there is, a, there is a critical thing right here and I want to illustrate this. You see how uh, one of, one of these uh, popsicle sticks goes all the way up to the peak here, and this one stops short, okay? We wanna note that this one here, you have a continuous run of wood all the way from the bottom edge all the way up to the peak, okay? I'm flipping it over. Okay, remember, this is the side that has the continuous run all the way up. What that means is that this side, we don't have a continuous run all the way up, right? It just goes up to there and then stops. So when we do our last pieces on the top here, we wanna make sure that the long piece doesn't go on this side, it goes on this side. So that way we have a continuous run of lumber from the, the shoulder all the way to the peak on this side and a continuous run of lumber on this side. That's very important because if we did it over here, you're gonna have two seams right in this area here and that could lead to a weak point right there, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that the the continuous piece goes all the way up on this side. All right. Just like that. And then the short piece goes on this side here. Okay. Now this is a little bit wonky. You can see some of my cuts are a little bit off. You know, for demo purposes, I think this is totally fine. But uh, you'd want all these, these cuts to be you know, straight down here. And once you finish the first of these um, rafters, what I would do is uh, just kind of nail it down lightly to the deck. Uh, don't sink the nails all the way, uh, leave the nails sticking out, but secure this thing to the deck. Uh, in fact, you could have even done that when you did your first layer of boards there, okay? You, you secure it to the deck and just leave it there. And don't put this one up first. This one is going to go up last. The reason that you leave this one here is this can act as a template for all the others. So this one stays here and I'm going to build another one right on top of it. And the benefit of that is that my second one is going to be exactly the same shape as this one because I'm going to have it sitting right on top. I'm going to be using my carpenter square to make sure all the boards line up perfectly. and as I take, take them off and set them in place, I'll put up one and then I'll build another one and then I'll put up that one. And then once I have these two up, then I would detach the, th the, the first one we made and put that one up last. Uh, I think that's a great way of going about it because then, like I said, the important thing isn't so much what the shape is. The important thing is that they're all the same. All right, so let, let's put this one up here. Uh, I think I'll attach it on this end just so it's easier for you guys to uh, see and appreciate. And all we have to do is, well, it's easy with popsicle sticks. This is one of the things that's easier with popsicle sticks in real life, because this thing is going to be fairly heavy. It'd be good to have a couple people and some ladders. You want to get this thing up here and get it to slot in on one side and then lift this side up and slot that in. And then you're going to nail here and here to get those guys together. Now for our purposes, it's hot glue, which actually makes it a little bit trickier, I think the nails, but I'll just pump some glue into both of these slots. There we go. And we're going to drop it down in there. Yeah, this is actually a little less strenuous or stressful with the nails because they, they aren't 
cooling on you as you put it together. Okay, so there we go. What we have here is the basic structure. We have one of our uh, roof uh, trusses on there. We would build a couple more. And the next step on this is boarding up the sides. Now we mentioned that uh, on this side, I'd put these uh, uh, brace boards on on the outside. Uh, you would you know, eventually want to kind of move those over onto the inside, but let's just start throwing you know, some boards up here. I've got some extra popsicle sticks here, and um, how do I want to do this? I think I'm going I'm to work over on this side over here, because this side we did properly. Let's get the camera over here like that, okay? And we're going to start boarding it up, okay? And uh, the boards that we'd be using here, uh, I would definitely not re recommend that this be two by fours. This would be like some kind of a one inch thick board, like a one by eight or a one by six. Uh, and especially if you can get tongue and groove versions of these, that's gonna work really well in order to kind of lock everything together. Tongue and groove is kind of like, it's like a slot and a, uh, a hole that kind of like uh, locks together. You know, the same kind of thing that I was talking about for the, uh, the floorboards here. Uh, if you're doing that, it doesn't really matter whether the tongues are up or the grooves are up. I usually make it so that the, um, the, the tongues face up uh, and the grooves face down. I just, I don't know, that's what, what I'm kind of used to and I figure like stuff won't settle into it or whatever, uh, whatever but um, you know, it doesn't really much matter one way or the other. And what we're gonna do is, uh, I, wish, I wish I was doing this on this side so I could actually see, but we're gonna board up from this side just like that, okay. So we got one on there. These you could also leave long if you wanted to. That's an option. And then you can cut them later. However you want to do it. I'm just going to go part way up this wall. Sometimes when you're working with tongue and groove boards, they don't want to stick together. You know, it's, from manufacturing, there's a little imperfection in them or something like that. And the way that I usually address that is by um, uh, taking, oh, is it popped off? Okay, yeah, my nails released. It's fine, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, the way I usually uh, work with that is I'll take a piece of scrap, um, tongue and groove board, and I'll take the piece, uh, put the piece of scrap, like let's say, like, here's my scrap. If this is a section that doesn't want to bang in, I'll put the piece of scrap there and I'll use a hammer to bang the scrap in and that way you don't damage the tongue and the groove. It's fine, River. I want, I want to build it all later. Oh, okay, you're going to finish it? I want to finish it and make the whole thing. All right. You think we could live in it in an emergency? No. <laughs> no, but I want to get rid of these at some point and like... No, right. that's fine. It's a nice little house. And if... I like put outside and put metal roof on it. <laughs> okay. And yeah. see how it survives. It should be. Should do fine as long as you can keep the stuff uh, sort of uh, dry inside. Okay, so as we are boarding up these walls here, uh, one nice thing about this process is that, I'm gonna make a few more. As we board up the outside, we don't need our diagonal boards anymore. So at some point, you get to the point where you can pull those diagonals, all those brace boards, and it feels really good to pull them because things start feeling more like a real house but you always want to leave them up as long as you possibly can because uh, you know they're helping to keep everything straight while you do all the uh, the carpentry work. All right, I'm going to put one more on here. There we go. And as you get up to the uh, the top of the uh, uh, the wall and you start to go up onto the roof, you just uh, wrap them around and you continue with boards all the way up to the top there. I'm going to pull off my brace uh, on the inside and I can pull off this brace on the inside. Yeah, the glue is being agreeable, it's coming off. And at this point, my wall is still nice and straight because now all these boards on the outside are acting as the braces and they're holding everything together very, very well. 
And there you go. I mean, that's the basic uh, layout of this. Uh, the, the rest of it is deciding where you might want to put windows. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into windows today. You kind of have to frame a window out, put it two horizontal uh, pieces over the window, you know, some uh, verticals on the side of it. Same for a door. You know, you want to frame out a door. Incidentally, if you ever wanted to get access to the basement of here and be able to use it for uh, uh, you know, food pantry items or anything like that. You'll definitely want to have some kind of an access hatch on the inside here. But uh, that is the basic approach to this. I've uh, used this building technique many times in the past. The house that I'm in right now uses this, this basic uh, approach to things where you're creating posts and they slot into each other and you're building your floor beams. And it's just, it's a really great, uh, it's a great building method because you can change it to whatever you want your um, your specific structure to be. This one here, uh, this would be about a like a seven by seven foot uh, structure. So I guess it's like a 50 square foot shed. This is kind of like a shed at this point. Uh, so you could use this as a 50 square foot shed or you could do another two bays and make it 100 square feet or another two bays beyond that, make it 150 square feet. You can make this as long as you like. It starts getting a little bit complicated if you, if you get it past 10 feet because then you have to worry about uh, you know, the load of the roof and everything. If you want to just build like a very simple basic thing, uh, you know, out at a retreat, a retreat location, I would keep it no more than 10 feet wide, you know, eight, eight to 10 feet. And I think 10 feet is perfectly manageable. And, and what's really great about building small is it's a really human scale to work at. The place that I'm in right now, like I said, it uses the same uh, building approach that this uses. Uh, you know, like all of these posts are the posts that I have in the walls here, all of the, the, the floorboards that I discussed here, it's the same kind of floorboards that I have in the, in the floors here. Uh, the, the ceiling rafters are built in exactly the same way, but it's just bigger. And when you build at like this kind of full size scale, remember that, that might be bordering on being distracting. Um, when you're building at this kind of full size scale, it's just, everything just gets harder. Uh, for example, these uh, roof uh, rafters that I had to put up, uh, something like this is, it's liftable by one person. Uh, the roof rafters that I built for this place are 24 feet wide and they're made out of two by eights and they're incredibly heavy. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned for this, I would suggest it, two by fours could probably work at this small scale. I would suggest uh, two by sixes uh, for this. Two by eights you could use, but it might start getting to be a little overkill. For a roof of structure, I'd say, you know, two by sixes for these kind of things. And the collar tie could be a two by six or a two by four. Uh, but that was just a bit of a, a digression. But putting up the rafters for this place was incredibly awful. Uh, it was. It was really stressful doing it with two people. Putting up the first one, we were afraid it was gonna like fall off the side of the house and then fall down two stories onto the ground, which would have been you know, kind of disastrous. Somehow I was able to lift them single-handedly myself uh, after I got the end cap on because at least they wouldn't fall, uh, you know, fall to their death down on the ground. But building on this smaller scale, uh, it's a really easy scale to work on if you have to work by yourself. And I've built uh, structures like this by myself and it's, uh, it's great because everything that you're lifting, it's manageable and it's it's at that kind of human scale so 10 feet across and the sky's the limit on how long you want to make it because once you can make one of these uh kind of truss uh, uh setups to to create a bay once you make one it's just a matter of repeating it as many times as you want in terms of making this nice and long so if you're interested in doing more of this i have an entire series it's a playlist about building the house that i'm in right now it has something at the time of this recording, it's like 600 and something episodes where I go day by day by day from the very early days of clearing the forest uh, down to, uh, well, today. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm doing today, you know, things with regard to the chicken coop. But I go through every step of the process from making these boards at real scale, like showing how to uh, put these posts together, showing how to put the decking together, showing how to do the entire process. And the, the series is long. It's, uh, it talks about everything. And to be honest, it's kind of dull. And like I mentioned with this build, if you got bored watching this build, you, you honestly, you, you, don't worry about it. You, you just don't have the patience. It, you've locked yourself out of the idea of being able to create this, self, this thing for yourself by the fact that you just have such a short attention span. Well, why am I even talking about it at this point? People, anyone who falls into that category has already stopped watching. But for those people, um, uh, 
you know, they lock themselves out of the ability to do this for themselves just because, you know, they can't focus on something long enough. In the series that I'm talking about, it has that same sort of aesthetic where I don't try to sugarcoat it and make it necessarily particularly exciting. I just talk about what I'm doing because if you're going to do this for yourself, you need to understand that it's a long process. It takes time. And if you don't have the enthusiasm to even watch a video like this or to watch a series about doing it for yourself, you know, you're never going to be able to put the, pro uh, the project together anyway. So I guess by making the series kind of dull. I'm saving people the hassle of getting part way in and they're like, man, it's been a week and my house isn't done yet. <laughs> so uh, so th that's kind of the tone that it's made at. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found it encouraging because this is something I'm not supposed to be able to do. You're not supposed to be able to do it. That's what our society tells us. You can't build your own house, except it's you know one of the biggest lies in our culture. Every other animal on the planet builds its own house. Humans are the only ones that have been, you know, convinced that, you know, you can't do that. You need to hire someone else to do that. Why, why is that uh, the case? Why are we, we being told that? Because there's more money to be made by people who sell houses if they can convince everyone that you need to hire them to do it. I put solar panels on this roof uh, of this house. One last uh, anecdote before we uh, close this video out. I put solar uh, panels uh, on the roof of this house. Um, buying all the materials and putting it up myself, I paid just under $20,000 for the solar panels uh, and, and all the gear, all the batteries, completely off grid, were completely detached from the grid. The grid could go down. This house is still running just fine. Uh, it cost me about $20,000 for all the equipment uh, to do that. I asked for quotes for someone to do it for me. I, I built many houses, but I don't really like heights. I, in fact, I would probably say I have a fear of heights. I don't like being high up in the air and whenever I can avoid doing it, I always try to avoid it. I got some quotes on uh, people installing the solar panels on the roof. And the lowest quote that I got was $140,000 for a system which is smaller than the system that I put together myself uh, for $40,000, for $20,000. So I got, I mean, $140,000 is under, unjustifiable. Uh, the fact that I knew that I could build the same, si a better system with more storage capacity for $20,000 instead of paying someone else $40,000 to do it. Uh, you know, I was just compelled, okay, well, I gotta do it. You know, it's just, it's not cost competitive. I gotta do it myself. And that, that's the way that it is with houses and housing. A structure like this, you could build for several thousand dollars. Hiring someone to do it, it's gonna just be so much more money. Hiring someone to uh, build a house for you is just so much more money. It is it, at least double, if not quadruple the price of the materials to do it yourself. Sure, it takes some time, uh, you know, sure it takes some effort, but as you can see from this popsicle stick uh, demonstration, it doesn't take that much skill. It takes the ability to cut boards, to measure things, to take your time, to have your boy around, to tell you when you're putting something on backwards. But it is something that is achievable by anyone who has the patience and the, uh, the determination and the drive to do it for yourself. If you're one of those people, I encourage you to do it. You can do it. Here's a link to that playlist if you're interested in watching that uh, the video series on how I built this place. Good luck. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.